Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to go over an example on eigenvalues and eigenvectors again, but in this case, I want to do a really specific example where you're given an eigenvalue of a matrix and you're given the matrix. And the question is worded something like, show that lambda is an eigenvalue of A and find a corresponding eigenvector. So in the question, you're told that lambda is an eigenvalue. So basically, we know that we're chasing after this expression here that is AX equals lambda X. We just want to show, we want to find a vector x that shows that this can happen. And basically what this expression is, is we have the matrix times the vector is going to give us the exact same thing or the exact same transformation to the vector as if we had just multiplied a certain scalar to it. And that certain scalar will be an eigenvalue if we can construct this statement. Uh, and the vector here will be considered an eigenvector. So we have lambda and we have matrix A. So let's fill out what we can right now. So we know that this is 4, 8, 6, 26. We don't know what vector X is, so let's just put it in as uh, X1 and X2. Um, we have lambda, we know that that is the value of 2. And again, we're going to write vector x as unknown, so just by components x1 and x2. Okay, so at this point, what you could do if you were looking, you know, to find every single eigenvalue that's unknown, and then you know uh, all the eigenspaces and some sample eigenvectors that correspond to those, what you could do is you could find the characteristic equation of A, find out what the roots are of that polynomial, and then that would be your eigenvalues. And then from there, perform your null space things to basically generate your eigenspaces, and from there, find your eigenvalues. Sometimes that takes a long time, and that's not the most efficient way to find these things, especially if you're already told that this is an eigenvalue. So instead of going and doing it kind of a long, comprehensive way, what we're going to do is we're going to just look here, and uh, we're going to rewrite this as a system of linear equations uh, based on the information that we know here. So this whole first row uh, basically is 4 times x1 plus 8 times x2. And then we continue across in the first row, and through scalar multiplication, this is just going to be 2 times x1. The second row here is uh, through the matrix multiplication over here. We have 6 times x1 plus 26 times x2. And then the second row down here uh, is, again, through scalar multiplication. This is just 2x2. All right, let's simplify this a little bit. We'll do each line. And so let's um, let's subtract 2x1 from each side of the equation. So if we have 4x1 on this side, that goes down to 2x1. And then the next term only has x2s in it, so that's unaffected. So this is still 8x2. And then 2x1 minus 2x1, that just goes to 0. Okay, uh, let's simplify the second row here by subtracting 2x2 from each side. So the 6x1 term is not affected by this, so we have 6x1 plus, well, 26x2 minus 2x2 is 24x2, and uh, 2x2 minus 2x2, that goes to 0. All right, let's do the, another step here, trying to simplify these just so they're easier for us to work with. Let's divide everything, let's divide both sides of this top equation by 2. So 2x1 divided by 2 is just x1. And then 8x2 divided by 2, that's going to be 4x2. And then 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Okay, uh, looking here, let's divide both sides by 6 just to make this, again, this is easier for us. And what we're seeing here is that the first equation is actually exactly the same as the second equation. So we only need to really consider one of them because they're the same. So if we come down here, we can rearrange it a little bit. We'll bring the 4x2 to the other side. So we get x1 is equal to negative 4x2. And this has all of the information we need. Basically, we've just written x1 uh, in terms of x2. So if we consider x2 to be the independent variable, we just say that you know x2 is just equal to itself. And then x1 is equal to negative 4 times x2 then basically right here is the solution in parametric form to this whole system of linear equations. And we can rewrite this, uh, we can rewrite parametric form into vector form by simply just writing 
are what we have for each component because we have x1 here, x2, and in vector form we had x1 and x2. So x1 is negative 4 x2 and x2 is just x2. All right, something that we can do at this point is just drop the subscript because all we're saying here is that the first element is negative four times bigger than the second element. So we could use the letter X, we could use the letter A, it doesn't really matter. Just all we wanna indicate is that this first element is negative four times greater than the second element. And at this point, we have actually constructed or we've actually found the eigenspace that corresponds to this eigenvalue of two. And the eigenspace basically is just the set of all vectors that have this form where the first element is negative four times greater than the second element. Now using that information, knowing that this is the eigenspace, what we can do is if we just pull out the x, we get x times negative four, uh, sorry, the first element is negative four and the second element is one after we just pull out that x. And here inside the brackets, this is the basis for our eigenspace. And really because any vector that has this form with negative four and one multiplied by a scalar, um, any of those vectors are eigenvectors that belong to this eigenvalue of two. So really negative four, one is like this, this question was asking for is an eigenvector uh, that, that corresponds to the eigenvalue. So really at that point, we have actually solved the what the question was asking us for because we have found a vector that satisfies this equation. And if you're curious if it's actually satisfied, we can, uh, we can fill it in here. So we have two by two, which is four, eight, six, 26. And we're saying that an, eigenve an eigenvector that we're using is negative four, one and then we had two and negative four, one. And this stuff should all hold true. The left hand shot, the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. So let's quickly just crunch that. Uh, so we're gonna find that this left hand side is four times negative four plus eight times one. Second element is six times negative four plus 26 times one. And the right hand side, we can distribute this in. So we get two times negative four and two times one. And this reduces basically, the first element goes to negative eight, second element is two. And then on the right hand side, we also get negative eight and two. So that is awesome. The left hand side equals the right hand side. And ultimately that's what we were looking for here that this expression checks out because we have used proper eigenvalues and eigenvectors.